Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about black holes yet again. This is actually part 2 of the investigation of various new discoveries about black holes. And we're going to be talking about the central supermassive black hole at uh, the region of space known as the inner galactic region. Let's discover what it is that we learned about them in 2017 and 2018 and welcome to What The Math. So this particular video is going to be focusing on a discovery of a relationship between supermassive black holes in the middle and the creation of stars in the galaxy. All right, well, let's backtrack a little bit and let's actually talk a little bit more about the creation of stars and galaxies. So, so let's place Sagittarius a star, the supermassive black hole of our own galaxy in the middle and then just kind of place a bunch of random uh, stars around it to create a very interesting, but I guess somewhat uh, not very realistic looking um, mini galaxy. So we're going to be creating this microcosm of a galaxy. So imagine this is the inner region of the galaxy um, where a supermassive black hole is right at the center and it has these stars, including some of the giant stars, orbiting around it. Now, once in a while, some of these stars will actually, as you can see right here, fall apart and they will probably um, get sucked into, well, not sucked into, but they get attracted to Sagittarius A star and get essentially, I guess you could call it swallowed, but it's not really swallowing. Um, in other words, they're going to get destroyed by Sagittarius A star. And this process will actually create a tremendous amount of energy. And this is actually when we um, call galaxies AGNs or uh, active galactic nuclei. Now, in some cases, some galaxies actually stayed active for quite a long time. But um, one thing that makes them very, very unusual and very special is that they actually start emitting a tremendous amount of energy that can also be visible uh, really far away. And those galaxies in most cases are known as quasars. They actually become so bright that you can see them from essentially the edge of the universe. Let me see if I can maybe simulate some of those explosions here to try to release some energy from Sagittarius A star. And here, here we go. So here is our miniature AGN. So it just swallowed some um, energy and... Okay, I also apparently destroyed my black hole. That's not good. Uh, but basically think of this as energy being released and... Oh, wow, there's some, some cool stuff going on here. Um, and uh, as, it be, as it's being released, it uh, starts to emit um, a lot of various radiation. So I guess this is actually be a pretty good simulation of what might happen here. Now, um, the interesting phenomenon here is that as this, um, and imagine this is actually the supermassive black hole in the middle. Now we're going to switch a little bit. Imagine this is actually the energy that's being released here uh, from the center of the galaxy. This energy actually also influences the inner um, galactic core as well. So if I were to go back to the original simulation of the galaxy here, um, if, and look at the core again, this this region right here is also is being affected by the emissions from uh, the black hole. And these emissions will actually prevent new stars from forming because they will, um, not only will they actually expel some of the gas from here, but they will actually heat up a lot of the, the um, space dust molecules. And these molecules will actually start gaining more kinetic energy and uh, fly farther and farther away from the center. And thus will probably not even collapse into the stars. In other words, the more energy is expelled from the black hole in the middle, the more likely that the formation of stars in this galaxy will actually stop. And so this is the discovery we made in 2017, and the paper was actually published on January of 2018. It turns out that um, if you were to look at similar galaxies with similar, similar number uh, of stars in them, and then compare the actual size of the black hole in the middle, the galaxies whose black holes are not as massive, so let's just reduce mass here a little bit, the galaxies where the mass of the black hole is smaller, 
will actually have star formation enabled for much longer and will thus probably even have more stars at the end. So there will be more new stars created because the galactic core doesn't have uh, a black hole massive enough to essentially uh, destroy more stars and to produce more energy. Okay, let's try to visualize this again. So here we're going to take Sagittarius A star, uh, that's about 4 million masses of the sun, and another black hole that's going to be uh, om um, almost 3 times, or I guess 2.5 times bigger, at 10 million masses of the sun. Now, if you were to actually wait um, long enough, and that's of course assuming that both of these galaxies start with a relatively similar amount of stuff to begin with, you would realize that the galaxy with a slightly smaller black hole in the middle will have a lot more stars created. And these stars uh, will also be uh, somewhat younger as well because, because the creation of these stars uh, hasn't really been deactivated or has actually lasted for much, much longer time. And as a result, there's going to be more overall stars here. Whereas the more massive black hole, the one that's 10 million masses of the sun, will have deactivated its star creation a lot earlier. And at the same time, will have probably a lot less uh, stars or a lot of older stars and almost no young stars. So there's going to be a lot of neutron stars here, a lot of uh, smaller black holes, but not as many actual main sequence stars. And this is actually a very interesting discovery and also a very interesting relationship that we discovered because now by looking at a galaxy far, far away and by sort of estimating uh, the mass of the central black hole by looking at the, you know, the speeds of stars moving around it, we can then um, put it on a relationship graph where we can discover how many total stars it actually maybe has. And vice versa, by looking at the total number of stars, or estimating total number of stars, we can then maybe estimate the mass of the central massive uh, black hole. So this relationship um, was not very well known to us until recently, until we looked at a lot of these galaxies far away and analyzed them in a lot of detail and basically discovered this very linear re relationship between a mass of the central black hole the number of stars and the period when the star creation gets deactivated. So in our uh, galaxy, um, the stars are still being created, but not so much in the central region. But our um, uh, black hole is not as massive as some of the other ones. But there are galaxies out there where the star creation has already been deactivated because the mass of the central black hole um, has created so much energy around it that a lot of the gas has been expelled. And so the star creation is no longer uh, available to it. So all in all, it's a very interesting discovery. It maybe not as practical as some of the other ones, but, but this relationship allows us to understand other galaxies a lot better now. And we can now even maybe use this to um, create a very detailed list of uh, various supermassive black holes out there by looking at those galaxies and also the number of stars around them. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to discuss in this video, and this is video number two about 2017 and early 2018 discoveries about uh, black holes. And in the next video, we're going to talk about one more discovery we made very recently about these unusual, beautiful objects. But for now, let's actually watch what happens if we run the simulation a little bit longer, because I have a feeling that these two tiny miniature galaxies are actually going to collide with each other and possibly create some really cool effects. Although I did place them in orbit around one another, so maybe they never will. will. Maybe they'll actually end up spinning around each other forever. Oh, look at that. Here we go. That was, that was actually pretty interesting. We got a miniature interaction between them, and uh, it seems like the smaller Sagittarius A star has lost a lot of its stars, uh, while the bigger galaxy possibly even stole some of the stars from Sagittarius A. And this is maybe something that we'll um, experience one day when the Andromeda galaxy, uh, that's much more massive than um, the Milky Way, comes close to our galaxy and actually collides with it. Well, anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.